She is an actress, an author, an entrepreneur, a rancher, a mother of a teen daughter. Many who loved her as the feisty bush pilot on TV's Northern Exposure may think of her as an Alaskan, but Janine is most certainly a Texan, from a long line of Texans, which legend says even includes the last president of the Republic of Texas. She is the daughter of a West Point Academy graduate, an Air Force pilot, and a San Antonio mom. Janine Turner is revolutionary in both heritage and attitude. Janine and her daughter Juliet live on a working ranch where they raise horses, rescue dogs, and shepherd a herd of longhorn cattle. Janine's background gives her a unique understanding of how entertainment shapes our culture. This has made her a potent force on the issues facing Americans today. Her work as a founder and chair of Constituting America, an organization whose mission is to reach and educate America's citizens about the importance of the U.S. Constitution, has paved the way for her transition to talk radio. Before we Texas, Janine Turner, radio talk show host. You're buying that, Janine. I, I believe it. I believe that they want to monopolize the time on the interview with that because then nothing can be, be pinned down, such as that Obama wants to fundamentally change America. Okay. They like ambiguity. They like it. I know her as Maggie O'Connell from the hit TV series Northern Exposure. She's also a radio talk show host and founder of Constituting America. Ladies and gentlemen, Janine Turner. What I have witnessed is the splendor of American ingenuity, the triumph of American tenacity, and the goodness of the American was heart. Built with her hands at work, not with her hands out. I'm pro-family. Um, and I'm not, you know, endorsing single motherhood with my book, but I think what starts to ha what happens in life is it sometimes throws you some curveballs. And there are some statistics out there that state in the 2003 U.S. Census Bureau that 43% of mothers in America were single mothers, and that was in two that was in 2003. And the statistics are a little bit higher now, more like 46%. So that's almost half of mothers in America are doing it alone, in one form or another. And then I realized that the definition of single mother is broad. A lot of us think it's sort of a modern day phenomenon. And I'm very, very proud to be an American. And, and, and I, I went to Hollywood at a very young age. I was in New York City at 15 and Hollywood at 17. And, you know, it's just a very different culture out there. And all these years, I didn't acquiesce. I stuck to my guns. I wasn't invited to the party at Jane Fonda's house, though. <laughs> I've never been part of the hip and cool group in Hollywood, really terrible. Oh, well. and the more that I read uh, the, the Federalist Papers and whatnot, the more that I'm aware of the fervency that our, found, that our founding fathers and founding citizens had. They wanted to know what the government was doing. They wanted to know what was in that bill. And guess what? The, the, the Congress at the time, the, the, our founding fathers, our constitutional founding fathers, they wanted to give it to them. They expected it, and they got it. We cannot afford to have a whole generation who lacks the knowledge of the importance of our Constitution. If we do, then how do we... And one of the congressmen took a book that was four times the size of this, and he puts it in my lap, and I swear I'm almost finished, I'll tell you about the truth. Act. Puts it in my lap, and he goes, look at it, it was the immigration bill. Oh my God. And couldn't understand it. Why? And, and, and I think it's the, the Republicans that passed this. Well, it's up online three days before we vote on it. <laughs> right? Four, four of these. And you open it up, and it was U U.S. legal code. It's all in U.S. legal code. Not only can we not understand it, they can understand it. And they talk about the fact when they do amendments, you know, when they fight back and forth about the amendments, they get another stack that's this big. Think of the Obamacare bill, which is 27 pages. And I'm not pro or against it. I'm not saying anything negative. It was just way too big, and nobody understands the world, world, what was in it. And so... Um, they, they opened it up, and, and they said they, they don't mark where the amendments are. So if they want to go see if the amendment's in there, they don't even know where to find it. So then I hear there are representatives that go on the floor, and they're ready to vote, and they go to their aides, to, to the people that are, like, doing the research to kind of tell them what it means. This is what our government's come to. This is not a partisan issue. This is an American issue. And so they lean in, and they go, how am I supposed to vote on this? This is pathetic. It is only going to be if we stand up for it that's going to make a difference. So they would say that they would search these bills for trigger words so they could know what was in it because no one could read it. And But the, the trigger words would be under different different topics 
so that that they couldn't even they, they didn't know what was in it until it passed and then it, it they still don't know what's in it um, it's, 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 and we're seeing that this is happening so I don't know about you but I think that this is this is tyranny we think we're far away from from a tyrant or from tyranny and I'm not blaming Democrats and I'm not blaming Republicans in a way it's our fault because we've sat back and we've let somebody else run the government we've let go of the wheel have it be in, in, a, in, a, in a language that people can understand so, single subject, 30 pages, have it be written in, in fifth grade reading, like reading level. I wrote a book for Thomas Nelson, and they kept taking out all my big words. I'm like, why are you doing that? I'm like, because it needs to, people, Americans read on a third grade reading level. I mean, the sisters, like 80% of kids in New York City are graduating that can't even read. In Dallas alone, including private schools, only 18% of the kids are graduating college right now. So not only do we have kids that don't know anything about the United States Constitution, they, don't even, they can't even read. And yet we're going to put this U.S. legal code up for three days and nobody can understand. So we have single subject, 30 pages, written at fifth grade reading level. Or they're to be read by the legislators. Uh, and then also I heard when I was meeting that when they give them the amendments to con to things, that they have this one, this version, then they give them this version with the amendments. But they don't make a note where the amendments put in. So there's no way of knowing from this book to that book. And so, and this is Congressman Vince Bellio, who actually has a Read the Bills Act himself, and he came on my show and talked to me about it, because we can't even tell where the amendments are. I mean, guys, I, I just think this is a poll. Um, so I put in there that the amendments are to be underlined and be with the old versions, so that people can look and say, okay, this is one of the red lines that we do. Now I know why this is there. Um, I also have stories of people going on the floor and saying to their aides, how am I supposed to vote on this? Oh, okay. It's not their fault. It's not, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a burdensome regulation. 223, but the agencies are passing 223 to one congressional law. Nothing could drive you to your knees like show business, <laughs> at least in my life. One rejection after another rejection, people looking at their watches and, and just going, next. But there was pressure, there was a lot of pressure. You're not tall enough, you're not smart enough, thin enough, fat enough, whatever it was. It was always something. So I was dealing with some of these, what I like to call my 10,000 no's, and I started to drink alcohol. And it was alcohol to deal with stress. It, it was affecting my life, and I, I had seen it affect my family as well. When I was 23 years old, I got sober. And I think a big part for me and my Christian journey is showing up for what God wants me to show up for. And to me, Life is a series of openings of chapters to God.